Hey guys, today I'll be introducing you to a great program to use uh, for photography. I do realize that Christmas is coming up, so a lot of people might be getting brand new DSLRs. And I do see a lot of people using Canon 70s and Canon 5D Mark IIs, and they're not really using them to their full potential. A lot of people just buy the cameras because of what they are, and when they don't use it to their full capabilities, it does sort of annoy me. But I mean it annoys me because people can create better images and they don't really just they don't do that so uh, this video is for you this is gonna help you this is a great uh, beginners point for a lot of people that just got their DSLRs or who are gonna get their DSLRs in the near future so program like I said is Adobe Photoshop Lightroom 3 it, it isn't a program that works within Photoshop it's a different program on its own however I do like to consider it as a sister program Basically, what the program is for is to drag in raw images from your DSLR and to edit them to your likings. Uh, so now you might be wondering what's a raw image. Well, there's a difference between a raw image and a JPEG. A JPEG is basically a compressed image that has lots of data loss. Uh, a raw image is uncompressed and doesn't have lots of data loss. And with less data loss, you have more data. And with more data, you have a lot, you have greater opportunities for manipulating your image. And some of you guys might be saying, oh yeah, post-processing, I don't need it. Well, you know, everything's a little better with post-processing. Everyone does it. And it's actually, you can get much better results. So, uh, diving into the program, this is a picture that I took earlier today of a BMW Z4 outside my house. And this is straight out the camera, so I just imported it and the program came up. And so once you have your picture chosen, you're going to go to develop. And with develop, you have a whole array of lots of values that you can change to make your picture a lot nicer. And basically, I'm going to walk you through these values and then what you're going to do when you're done with uh, doing your appropriate changes. So first things first, on the top right here, we have a histogram. And in this histogram, it basically shows the uh, differences of lighting and the basic uh, graphing your data from your camera so this is basically what a histogram can be um, under it we see some EXIF data uh, also known as metadata and we see that I shot at ISO 800 that I use a focal length of 35 millimeters and that my aperture length was f 4.5 and that I shot at 1 400th of a second uh, below that we do have some basic changes we have uh, uh, temperature and apart from that we have exposure recovery fill light and black so now I'm just going to explain to you what that is temperature you've probably seen this before uh, blue is cold and that's basically uh, it brings a little bluer tint to your picture and it sort of denotes a colder feeling to it uh, and warm gives a more orange tint so Today, uh, because in the background this is fall, so in the background we do have some orange in the trees, and you could see some of the orange of the uh, signals here. Uh, I'm just going to keep it a little bit warm, not too warm. And remember guys, subtle changes are probably your best side bet here. You don't want to go too big, you don't want to change the values too much because chances are your picture is already at a pretty decent medium. So. Uh, exposure, I did uh, shoot it at zero bias, so I'm going to increase that a little bit. And it does sort of bring out the image a little bit better. Um, the BMW is black, so I am going to increase the blacks a little bit to bring out the nice paint. And then the fill light, uh, this basically is a brightness, sort of, I like to think of it as that. But since the car is black, I'm just going to leave that at zero so we can sort of bring out the deep contrast between the black and the surrounding areas. As you can see above here, I did shoot this at a 4.5, so the depth of field is not really what I wanted it to be. Uh, as you can see, in the background there is some bokeh forming within the leaves, but probably if I had a uh, wider aperture, I could probably bring out such a lot greater bokeh, and the focus would have been a lot nicer on the headlights, but I don't have a, a nice lens yet, so I'm getting a f1.4 soon, so that will be great. If you look out for that, so we scroll down here to brightness. This is how bright the image is. You already, you already should know what this is. Contrast. Uh, I'm gonna leave contrast alone because this does refer uh, a lot more to color than it does to just the general 
highlights and the lowlights of the image. Clarity. Uh, this does bring about a much clearer image. However, if you do go overboard, it does seem to look a little fake over here. So just subtle, you know, changes. Subtle changes are the key here. I'm um, just gonna do that at plus 24. Vibrance is fine, and saturation is fine. Now this is just the curves. I mean, you've seen this before. Uh, I do. There's lots of snow here, and there is the sun coming in from sort of the corner here. So I'm going to increase that up so the snow can be nice and highlighted. And then I'm going to lower it, the darks because I want the black of the BMW to stick out a lot more. Alright, so then now we scroll down and this is by far my favorite section. On some pictures you do see like, here let me see if I can find one in my Flickr. Uh, Alright, like this picture right here. As you can see, I did highlight the red of the image, but then I did sort of take out all the other colors. There is some uh, skin tones here, but that is because the guy was a little bit red. Like, not Native American red, but he was a little bit red because uh, it was a cold day. So, you see a lot of photographers doing this. It does emphasize the beauty of the red color of the Porsche and sort of zones everything else out. And with these settings, that is exactly what you can do. You can click on yellow, and if you don't want any more yellows, then you can just lower the saturation, and that basically eliminates all the yellows in the image. If you want to emphasize yellows, you increase the saturation, and you can do that for any color. So, if you want to do that to green, you can do that with by selecting green or aqua, and then changing the luminescence, saturation, and the hue. Split toning, I haven't really gone into that much. I don't really use it. Uh, when I do find good use for it, I'll probably make a tutorial on it. So, but for now, I wouldn't really touch it if I were you. Sharpening, uh, you can leave that alone. Generally, the sharpness of your image is perfectly fine when it comes out the camera. Noise reduction, you don't really need, depending on your ISO speed. Uh, wow, that rhymed. Okay, so if you generally, I wouldn't recommend shooting at above a thousand. Anything above a thousand, you will start getting lots of noise, and noise can look ugly. However, with ISO, there is also another thing you must remember. If you increase your ISO, you will get a faster shutter speed. So if you do need to shoot something that is in motion, uh, increasing your ISO might do you some good. However, like I said, I would not exceed 1000 or 800, whatever, whatever your stop is on your camera. So if you do have lots of noise with luminescence, you basically can cover up that noise. But it does give your picture sort of a glowy, I don't know, like musty, glaze kind of look to it. And it really just ruins the clarity. So, like I said, I just try to keep my ISO under 1000 and I don't have to use noise reduction in the future. Uh, lens corrections, I wouldn't really touch. And effects, uh, this is the whole vignetting thing. If you want to, you know, darken the uh, corners and stuff, you can add some vignette to it. And grain. Uh, I wouldn't really change the dials. I mean, it's sort of pointless to me because it basically brings out extra noise. But if you do want to bring sort of a vintage look to your image in your post processing, then uh, increasing grain will be a good idea. So now that we have our image here and ready, we select it and we can go to File, Export. And then Export, we're going to export to our hard drive here. So uh, select the folder that's appropriate for you. I'm just going to export to my uh, desktop. A uh, subfolder, you can name it whatever you want. Basically, it'll make a folder on your desktop and put the image inside of that folder. Uh, rename it. Uh, I just keep the file name depending upon the image and the number that it came out the camera in. Format, I'm going to keep it on JPEG and quality is just going to be 100 because I'm going to probably end up uploading this to Flickr or something. Uh, color space, you're going to want to leave it at sRGB. And dimensions, like you can change it to whatever you want. I'm just going to. Put, I'm gonna, basically I'm just going to make sure that the width is at 1024 and then the height if you just leave that blank it will automatically make it proportional to it will keep that proportion that it came out of the camera uh, to whatever that is so at 1024 my height will be proportional and it would be at 683 so but that's for every camera this number is different so just uh, if you want the width to be 1024 it will automatically find your height for you so or you can just, you know, let the dimensions alone and just have it resize itself. Uh, as for pixels per inch, 
I wouldn't really. I mean, 72 is fine. You know, I mean, because we're not going to be printing anything off. Uh, this image will go on the web, so 72 PPI is perfectly fine. Uh, sharpen for you're going to want to have to have it leave it at sharpen for screen amount. Just keep it at standard. Uh, metadata, just leave this alone. Uh, make sure both boxes are not checked. And then for watermarking, I don't have any watermarks, so I'm going to leave that alone. For post processing, I'm just going to do nothing. So once we have that, just click import, export. And up here, you'll see a loading bar, and it says task completed. So we can go to our desktop and click on the folder, and we see the image over here, all exported. So I have this, I did this image before, and I have it on my Flickr, and this is what it looks like. Now we can go to our old image and select it and then go to develop settings and click reset and this is what the image was before so here just to contrast it to you I'm just gonna do this real quick just so you can see the difference between our edited picture and the original alright so this is the original and this is the edited so original edited original Edited. As you can see in the edited picture, uh, you can see the warmth of the image popping out. The black of the BMW just like I wanted. Hold on. You can see the black of the BMW just like I wanted. It's nice and sharp popping out. And the bokeh is sort of forming back here. So yeah, so that's that. If you have any questions on the program, any questions on photography, basically, you know, any questions on Flickr, uh, general questions, whatever you need. I will try to help you the best as I can. So just you can either send me a personal message on YouTube or you can just add my Skype. So thanks for watching and have a great day, guys. And Merry Christmas ahead of time if I don't talk to you by then. So yeah, bye.